Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, this is the Cybersecurity Program uh, Information Session. Uh, my name is Steve Alborn. So uh, we'll just give everyone a few minutes just to, to join and then we'll kick off shortly. Hello, Steve. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. And how are you? Good, man. So far, so good. And thanks for the session. I mean, I just connect. I mean, I, I got the email a couple of times, but today, fortunately, I got the correct link. Ah, oh, that's good. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll go through the program. Uh, we've got about a half an hour allocated, but um, I've got time at the end if there's questions as well. So we'll just go for as long as uh, uh, you guys need. And I'll give you all yeah. the info that, that you're you're after. Okay. Um, yeah, I sort of. Oh, yeah, I missed your point. Yeah, it should be. Okay, we'll just give it two more minutes and then we'll kick off. Yeah, okay. Well, I can see Matthew Glover's on the call. Welcome, Matthew. Seen you a few times around the track. Hi, Steve. Yeah, you'll <laughs> see my name floating around. Yeah. Actually, I remember you made the. Uh, the highlights reel for the IBM Hackathon back in 2020, just before we went into uh, COVID lockdown. Yeah, that the Hackathon that was like the last thing, I think, last it was the last event they were allowed to hold before they went into lockdown. Yeah, so the good, the good news is we're, we're uh, so July, um, I think it's the 19th, but don't quote me on the date, um, but it's, it's sort of in that sort of, 15 to 19 range. Uh, we're actually running uh, our next hackathon, which will be the first one that we've done live since the IBM one, uh, and we're partnering with Microsoft. Oh, that'd be um, so, nice. Okay. Yeah, so we're doing, we're doing, we'll have uh, Microsoft Central doing the opening. Uh, they've, they've provided some headsets as prizes and some Azure credits. Uh, and then we'll be put, putting up the cash prizes for ITRC. Uh, so really looking forward to that one because it's been been a long time uh, between hackathons. We did do uh, we did a cyber one, which was an online uh, hackathon that we did in July last year with uh, with Charles, Charles Sturt University, uh, which was excellent. Like we had more than a thousand people register for that one um, in person. You know, we're sort of expecting um, similar to the last one we did at Macquarie, which is about two hundred. Uh, when we did the IBM one, uh, we had about 100 people uh, come to that one. So, yeah, we're really excited about uh, I actually, that. I actually had someone email me. Uh, I want to say it was at the start of this year because they'd seen okay. me in, I think, that highlight reel. And they were saying like, oh, you must have done the ITIC internship already. Can you tell us how it was? And I was like, 
I haven't done it. <laughs> so you're you're up. Are you in your final semester? Semester two this year? Yeah. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. Finally yeah. made it. All right. <laughs> Still, I'm, uh, I'm a student of Charleston and I nearly completed my master in IT specialized to cyber security. Oh, okay. Uh, so you, you've been doing that at Charleston or? I, I just finished. I mean, last week I finished my final semester last exam. So hopefully by next month I'll get my results. So I'm done for the moment. Yeah, yeah okay, great. Um, so we are, well, actually, I don't know if I can say I'm not. Um, no, that's all right. I'll say. Um, so we are actually talking with um, a university that was just mentioned around setting mm -hmm. up a short course. Yeah, I heard which, is going to use, which is going to use the cyber range. So the good thing about the cyber security program uh, that, that we've launched uh, last semester was our pilot uh, that we did. So we had 15 students. Most of them were from Macquarie. Um, okay. We had a few people uh, coming from external. Um, but what we've done is built a program that incorporates the cyber range, uh, which we brought in from the US, mm -hmm. uh, which I'll show you a few screenshots from. Okay. Um, and then also the, the curriculum that we deliver is the Cyber Incident Response Manager certification, which has been developed under the NICE framework. So it's recognized by Australian and US companies. Uh, the NICE framework is an educational framework for cyber courses. Um, okay. So at the end of this program, um, if you wish, you can actually do the certification uh, as well as part of that. Um, the other thing that I can tell you, uh, which we've just signed off on, is we're going to have four uh, graduates from uh, ACT Health uh, who are going to join the program uh, this semester. Um, so that's an external engagement. So those guys have finished their degrees. They've got graduate roles in... ACT Health, so in the hospitals in, in Canberra, mm -hmm. uh, working in IT. So uh, they've actually paid as part of their training program for those four people uh, to join us uh, in next semester. So that, that's going to be really good as well. So it's good to see that the program is being recognised both from an academic perspective, but also from an industry perspective now. Uh, and cybersecurity uh, is really uh, front of mind for for all businesses now, um, and and particularly with with government. So um, we're we're working with you know government organisations and private organisations that are funded by government, like OS Cyber. Uh, yeah. Jeff Whitten, who's the Jeff Whitten, who's the uh, group executive for ITIC. He's um, he's a cyber ambassador for New South Wales Note. Uh, and, and the program that we're running now, um, we're actually talking with um, Queensland, New South Wales TAFE, uh, as well as uh, looking at building a sort of shorter, less intense version for uh, year 11 and 12 students at high school. So uh, cyber security is something that um, really, if you, you know, it's an in-demand high skills um, and, and, you know, not well resourced um, IT career because, um, you know, the government is actually really focused on building up our own uh, skills within Australia um, to support cyber security. And, and that goes from, you know, the government organisations, uh, with, with, you know, we've talked with Defence and other government departments, uh, but also uh, large companies. I mean, you only have to look at uh, a few of the recent high profile uh, hacking incidents. You had the solar winds hack. Um, you know, you had um, last year. You had Toll, uh, which is a, a really large uh, logistics and transport company. Uh, they got they got hacked twice, and and that was from the inside out. So the people uh, who were responsible for um, exposing that vulnerability, uh, and and then. Uh, what then became a ransomware attack, which happened twice, mm. from what I understand, were actually inside the organisation. So um, it's a really hot topic, and it's really you know you've got yeah. the uh, you know you've got the Cyber Research Council, uh, the CRC, mm. um, you've got the Signal Directorate, um, all of the government stuff that we're involved in is really 
um, strong um, communication and outreach from government, uh, particularly in cyber security at the moment. So uh, the good thing about cyber is if you choose a, I mean, IT in itself is a high, high demand uh, skill set. Uh, but when you look at in particular cyber, um, you know, there's less people uh, involved uh, who do it to the highest levels. So if you can, um, you know, build up your skills uh, quickly, then I think you'll find the acceleration rate for your progression in the cyber career compared to other more established industries in IT will be, uh, you know, it'll out, outstrip it quite easily. So, but anyway, that's enough of me uh, ranting about cyber. I love cyber. I think it's it's uh, one of the key focuses of, of our both our business um, from a uh, professional services and consulting perspective, uh, but also uh, it, it's quickly become uh, probably the biggest um, education program that we're running as well. Yeah. Um, the other thing to mention is that we do cyber on different levels. So uh, ITRC is a uh, partner of UTS. So we run short courses for uh, executives and boards um, talking about uh, compliance and risk and developing a cyber strategy. So Jeff, uh, who I mentioned before, is a short course lecturer. Uh, and then we've got some really um, significantly skilled people uh, from industry. So the guy that we've partnered with in the US, Michael Kaplan, um, he actually wrote all the curriculum. Like that guy's got every certification you can think of under the sun when you have a look at his download his, uh, his CV off LinkedIn. Uh, there's not many cyber services that, that guy doesn't have. So we're actually um, really blessed to have uh, him as part of our uh, organization as well. All right, so let's have a chat about the program. So first we'll just cover off ITIC and, and um, you know, this has been around the traps for a while. So I apologize if you've seen it before, but for those of you who haven't heard of ITIC, uh, ITIC was established in 2001. Um, and we have a multifaceted IT business. So we do focus on training, certification, and obviously work integrated learning programs that we run uh, for different universities. Um, but we're also a software development uh, house. So we have a couple of uh, software platforms that we've developed um, over the years, uh, which was really the starting point for the business for me. Uh, and those software platforms are both used in Telstra and their customers, as well as uh, globally, um, we have a version of our software that's now being OEMed by Cisco and in use by all the Cisco uh, global HCS partners. Um, the, the business side of it also, we do IT consulting, we have an IT help desk here. Um, we've onboarded a few large customers, um, like Queensland Rail, uh, ABB, which is an engineering company, and we've just got a, an engagement with Allianz. Um, as well as what we already support through the software business in Telstra. Um, we're, we're quite heavily focused now on cyber and network security. So we've established a different branch within the organization that specifically focuses on cyber and network security. Uh, and as I mentioned, our group includes a diverse range of, of different tech companies. So it's not just one brand, it's multiple brands. Um, we have a Sydney and New South Wales uh, presence, but through some of our more rec recent acquisitions and, and uh, joint ventures, we are venturing out into the rest of the country. So we're doing work in, in, in all states really now. Um, we have, as part of the IT help desk, uh, we have uh, JB Hi-Fi as a customer. So we do the field services work for them, back to their stores, uh, but also the commercial business. So they uh, commercial customers, we support them from a field services perspective. Uh, we've got a presence in Orange, New South Wales, um, which is where Jeff is located. So that's why we've got something in Orange. Uh, and then the programs that we do uh, are coordinated in line with the business units that we have, which focus on data science, cybersecurity, IT help desk, and software development. Um, and we're still pending, but we're nearly there with our uh, PY program uh, within ITIC. Um, we've just had a 
a slight delay because our facilities here um, didn't have a level of um, compliance uh, that was needed. So we just went to the uh, alternative classroom next door. So if you do, once we get up and running and we're finished and we're looking to do a PY program, if you do come here, uh, rather than 321 Pitt Street, uh, the classroom is located at 309 uh, Pitt Street, which is just next door. Um, so the business structure or the group structure. So when I started uh, the business back in 2014, I uh, created a company called Intuitive Technology Innovations or ITI as, as it was known. Um, and that's a software house and it's developed tools uh, around Cisco, UC, provisioning and automation uh, and contact centers. So uh, products that we developed include SAMT, uh, Chatness, which is a contact center chat tool. Uh, or chat platform uh, that's proprietary to ITI and that we embed within Cisco uh, software as a gadget. Uh, and then supervisor toolkit. So we've moved into Twilio uh, now. So uh, we're working on, on that from an application uh, perspective. So from a cyber perspective, uh, one of the things that we're looking to do uh, as part of the program this semester is look at threat modeling. Um, and use Microsoft, we've got a pretty cool uh, threat modeling tool. Uh, but one of the things that we need to add to that is process flow. So uh, we'll be able to test that against our software. Um, the challenge with threat modeling um, is if you're using some of the open source, um, um, you know, open source components in your software, uh, they don't necessarily have the libraries that you need. Um, so you need to develop those individually. Um, then from ITI, um, I basically uh, took over ITIC uh, back in 2016 uh, and Yarn Lab was sort of a spin-off software company uh, out of ITI. So Yarn Lab is more focused on uh, migration and testing, uh, whereas ITI is more focused on, you know, day two provisioning, moves and changes type work. Uh, within ITIC, we obviously have the, the educational uh, part, but ITIC Systems uh, owns and manages the Telstra uh, call recording platform. Um, so if you have a Telstra mobile phone or a Telstra IP telephony um, telephone, <coughs> um, the call recording platform that Telstra provides is owned and managed by ITIC. Um, and as I said, we have an IT help desk and many services. And the more recent um, expansion from an ITI uh, group perspective has been into um, some of the voice centric products that we've built around Microsoft uh, Teams. So we, we do direct routing and we have our own uh, session border controllers that provide SIP trunks for Microsoft customers who want to call uh, you know, public numbers from their Microsoft Teams client. Uh, and then we've moved quite heavily into Twilio. So we're focused in the contact center space. Um, you can see there cyber sec defense. So that's our brand that specifically focuses on cyber security. Uh, and then we've got Yiriga, which is a, a majority indigenous owned company uh, that leverages uh, the group to provide IT services uh, predominantly into government through the Supply Nation uh, program. And data uh, is where we have housed our uh, AI data science um, projects. Uh, and we've registered a patent uh, at the beginning of this year uh, for AI enabled education, which is a research project that we've had uh, in place with Macquarie University since 2019. Um, so from a um, so from a cybersecurity perspective, so we do do some project work, uh, which is through Talent Crew, uh, which is a company that's owned by Paxis. So we do short term project engagements. So some of the things that you'll see around uh, Palo Alto and Cisco, sort of more network security type projects. If you've got experience in any of those, uh, we can put you into the targeted program where you can potentially uh, you know, be one of our contracted resources. Um, or otherwise, the open program is open to everyone. Um, ideally, at the end of this, as the 
um, business grows in the cyber security space. So we do a lot of sort of penetration testing and vulnerability scans and those sort of things. Um, that all comes out of CFD or cyber tech defense. Um, during COVID, uh, we sort of had a little bit of a problem, which was that our programs were all uh, based on face-to-face, -face classroom, face, hands-on, um, in-person type work in the graded learning. Uh, what we've done now is we've moved everything online. So as part of the work in the graded learning program, uh, we use Microsoft Teams or Zoom uh, for our course delivery and for our team meetings. Um, and then also as part of the program, um, you just don't just get work experience, we sort of focus on uh, soft skills as well and technical readiness. So as part of the programs, you'll get the opportunity to attend uh, our weekly meetings and also uh, present uh, what you've done during the week uh, to the team so that we can uh, make the assessment for your final mark for your, uh, if you're coming in from Macquarie University and doing this part of your master's degree. Um, all of that will go towards your final mark that we submit. Um, as I said, we moved everything online. Um, so we built our LMS, which is based on Moodle. Uh, you've probably used Moodle before. Um, you can see there the screenshot is for Cyber Incident Response Manager. So the course curriculum lives in the LS. You can access it through the internet at any time. Um, all of the lectures are recorded. Uh, so you can attend ideally in person, but if not, uh, you can watch them afterwards. Um, the only mandatory component of doing the program is that you uh, is that you attend the, uh, the team meeting at the end of the week and do your presentation. Uh, but we do allow you if you can't attend for whatever reason. Um, you know, some people have part-time jobs and those sort of things. Um, you can pre-record uh, your presentation and then we'll play it during the meeting. But basically the, uh, uh, the lectures and the guest speaker sessions are, are um, optional but we'd like you to attend as, as much as possible. Um, and the team meeting uh, is, uh, is mandatory unless you have other commitments that we can talk about and, and negotiate how we deal with those um, prior to, uh, to the kickoff of the program. Um, so we have two streams. So the targeted program, so this is one where we're looking for people who already have uh, a skill set that can be utilized for contract work that ITIC does. So um, as part of the targeted program, what will happen is you'll still do the training component, uh, but the training component, uh, which we normally charge an enrollment fee for, um, to pay for the lecturers and the facilities and all those sort of things. Um, if you're in the targeted program, uh, then you will get that as a scholarship. So that will be, um, You've been interviewed, selected. Um, you have a strong, um, relevant work history or uh, certification skill set uh, in either cyber or network security, and we can utilise you for some of our project work, which therefore then means that uh, your contracted resource will get paid uh, as part of that um, program during the project. Um, that's not for everyone because most of the people we find, whilst you might have done some, uh, you know, background work in uni or you've done a little bit in networking or whatever, um, we're still looking for the people who have done their bachelor's, worked in, um, you know, have developed strong networking skills and worked in the industry uh, for a couple of years uh, and, and who can therefore leverage that to, um, you know, work on a project uh, or build the work that we do uh, through ITRC. Uh, so in the targeted program, uh, we have a competitive process. Uh, so you'll be selected firstly, uh, if you have a relevant skill set for an interview, uh, then we'll go through an interview selection process. Um, and then we'll have a limited number of positions depending on the current billable work that we have that requires those uh, skills. And we're looking for either Palo Alto, Cisco, or Fortinet. So we're a Fortinet partner. 
Uh, we're a Cisco partner and we've had some project work with a large uh, private hospital group uh, in Palo Alto. So um, those ones really, uh, they might start during your internship program, but likely to turn into a, uh, a longer sort of ongoing engagement if the project um, is successful and we can continue to give you work opportunities. Uh, but in saying that, if you enroll in the open program, uh, you get the fully immersive training, work integrated learning, simulated learning environment. Uh, and then ideally, if you achieve the industry certification as part of that, um, at the end, we put you into our uh, short term contracted workforce. So when projects come up, we can call upon you uh, to do uh, work opportunities. The last one that we had was with Telstra, where uh, we stood up a work operations center for them for six weeks. Uh, we brought in 10 people, uh, or nine people, I should say. Uh, three people were CCIE level resources that we already had in house, and the other six we sourced through uh, the uh, work integrated learning programs. And they were people who'd done the certification or at least done the uh, training and were able to go in and step into those roles uh, for that period. It was a highly successful way of sort of building a team at short notice. Uh, so we're always on the lookout for um, either targeted people that we can use straight away or open program people that we can move uh, into our uh, workflow as we, as we go forward. Um, so in the targeted role, we're looking for, um, you know, three people up to five. Um, as cyber security or network security engineers. And as with uh, this program, uh, compared to uh, the open program, uh, you send both your uh, CV, uh, transcript and covering letter um, to jobs at ITRC. If, you're, uh, if you feel you have the relevant experience to do either a cyber or network security role, uh, then put um, targeted. Um, for cyber in your subject line in the email. Um, if you're applying for the open, um, then we put open cyber uh, on the subject line. Um, so in the open program, so what do you get out of the open program? So one of the main things that will help you along the way when you're applying for other roles, uh, once you've finished your, your masters is, you know, you need a reference. So by coming and working with us for 13 weeks, we get to know you uh, and we can, you can put us down as a reference on any job applications and we can share, um, you know, what we've learned about you and your performance uh, when you apply for jobs. Um, the pre-placement training, so keeping in mind also that the open uh, is where you're enrolling uh, in the course components, so that there, is a, there is a fee associated with that. Um, but the training that you get, um, if you um, do all of that, complete the training, get to know the materials, um, then at the end of it, we, we will include uh, the uh, exam fee uh, as part of the, the training cost. So if you get to the point where you're ready to take the exam, uh, we pay the exam fee and then you go and get the uh, certified incident response management, um, nice certification. Uh, and as I mentioned, as part of the program, uh, you do become uh, part of the ITRC resource pool. Uh, and the best performing resources, if you need someone to help there, still in the cyber team or in other areas of the business, then uh, we do hire uh, people directly from the programs as well. Um, so who are our mentors? Uh, Jeff, uh, he's a, a tech uh, industry um, you know, veteran, uh, been around for a long time, had his own successful IT company for many years, uh, works with me uh, as, a, as an advisory consultant. Um, he actually does the mentoring uh, for the cyber program. Uh, and he's an ambassador for the New South Wales CyberNode, which is now part of Boss Cyber. Uh, then we have Wade, uh, who's director of Cyber Arms, which is an industry group. Uh, and he's also IT operations manager of ePay, which is a financial uh, transactions company. Uh, so obviously cybersecurity is very important to, important to financial companies. 
Um, so he, him and Jeff between them run the, uh, uh, run the program. Um, so certification, uh, so we do the cyber incident response management certification. Um, so basically that's the first uh, five weeks of the 13 week program. Uh, that's instructor led, so it goes through all the course material uh, that you can access on the, um, on the illness. And then what we'll do is uh, during the first five weeks, we'll have two classes, uh, Monday and Wednesday, uh, where we'll deliver all the course material and then you'll go off and, and do your own study and learn uh, as we go along. Uh, then we get to the cyber range. So this is where we have, uh, we use the battle rooms, which I'll show you within the cyber range. Uh, the cyber range is a fully immersive uh, virtual platform, uh, but it uses real world technology in the back end. So when you go on to a challenge and you're accessing a Kali Linux server or, or a desktop, Windows 10 desktop, um, you're using Wireshark or uh, or, or you're using um, autopsy for, for forensic analysis, um, or using Nmap. It's all real live um, hosted on Azure uh, virtual machines. So it actually spins up in real time. So when you're doing your hands-on work, you're actually doing it on real, uh, a real environment. Uh, we call it a cyber range because it's like a, a, you know, a rifle range. It's sort of very military focused. Um, so you're going somewhere where you can practice your craft uh, in the safety of, you know, a contained environment where it's not, you're not going to cause any issues to anyone or yourself. Uh, so with the work experience component, we have our stand up meeting and task allocation on the Monday morning. Uh, then on the Wednesday, um, where we can organise, we have a Q and A. Uh, as well as a guest speaker session. So that's where the people uh, from the industry will come. Uh, so last semester we had uh, someone from ASA, which is the Australian Information Security Association, uh, ASTARCA, uh, and then also um, some industry people. Um, Jeff uh, was, was one of the speakers, as well as some other um, key sort of SISO type people uh, who will get to come and talk to you. And then on Friday, uh, that's where you as a team meet together. Uh, the meeting is chaired by either myself or Jeff, uh, and then you present uh, the tasks that were, that were assigned to you uh, on the Monday and what you found for the week. Um, so how to apply. So whether it's open or, as I said, targeted, um, apply by submitting your application to jobs at itic.com.au. Uh, submit your CV and your transcript. If you're applying for the open program, uh, then just submit your transcript. Um, and then we'll enroll you uh, in that. Uh, open means irrespective of your experience, what, uh, what your master's is in, even if it's in um, something that's not directly related to cybersecurity, you can still enroll uh, in the cybersecurity program. Um, so when you do the Certified Incident Response Manager, um, just going through some of the roles uh, that that relates to. Now, these are actually, this is, um, you know, a government framework for cyber education and industry people recognise cyber incident response management under the NICE framework as a certification and as a role uh, that you can complete. And within that role, uh, for Cyber Incident Response Manager. Uh, you can do things like Information Systems Security Manager, Cyber Crime Investigation, uh, Vulnerability Assessment Analyst, Exploitation Analyst, Cyber Defense Incident Response Responder, and Threat Warning Analyst. Now that all sounds great, a lot of words, uh, but those are actually individual roles that the CIRM uh, would prepare you for. Um, so just going through our cyber range, um, so you can see uh, we go into battle school. Uh, it's, a, it's an online uh, gamified training platform. Uh, and within the battle rooms, this is where you have your assigned tasks. So within battle room nine, which is where cyber incident response management um, hands-on goes to, 
um, you'll log on to a, a Windows 10 machine, which has got autopsy uh, installed. And then you, you've got an image from a, a laptop that was, um, that was um, compromised. And then you'll go through and use autopsy, which is a tool uh, that analyzes registry. Um, and you'll be asked lots of questions around how to, uh, information around, um, you know, how to identify uh, from the forensic perspective what's happened on that machine. So it's quite interesting um, and it's, it's um, you know, quite interactive. And as I said, you're working on, uh, on real virtual machines. Uh, so it's not like you're learning from a textbook. The cyber range is actually going to, to allow you to log in, do tasks, and do things that you would uh, in a working environment in a safe uh, way. Uh, we also have missions, so you can uh, select a mission and we can create blue and red teams uh, to compete against one another. Uh, what we we'll try to do this semester is actually have a challenge uh, where we go in and use the, the missions to um, you know, compete against one another and then uh, we might do some prizes uh, associated with that, like a mini uh, hackathon. Um, so to recap, um, the roles that we have targeted, cyber engineer or network engineer, um, and open as uh, a cybersecurity engineer, which is going to give you the certified incident response management um, training and submit your applications to jobs at itlc.com.au. Um, now, if Jennifer is on the call, I'm just looking at that date with the application closing 25th of July. Is that correct? Because I thought the program actually started at the end of July. Yeah, sorry, it should be 25th of June. Okay, that's better. So you got until the 25th of June. So basically a uh, week and a bit um, to get your application in, and then we'll go through and enroll everyone um, as part of that. So Samuel uh, Praneeth, who's uh, probably on the call as well. Uh, he's going to coordinate all enrollments, um, but just get your details to us as soon as possible if you'd like to join. Um, and as always, um, personally, I'm on LinkedIn, so I'm happy to uh, connect with all of you. Um, so please send me a LinkedIn request if, you, if you're not already, already connected uh, so you can join the group. Um, one of the things that we'll get you to do if you'd like to as well as part of the program is actually update, create not create if you don't already have one, but update your LinkedIn profile uh, to say that you're working as a cyber analyst uh, at ITIC, uh, because all of those things sort of pull together as well uh, moving forward so that you can land your first uh, role. Uh, so that's it for me. Sorry, I've talked a lot. I'm probably going to be over time. Um, happy to open up for any questions that you might have uh, at this point. Uh, hi, Stephen. This is Mohan. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so uh, I think I am qualified enough for the uh, targeted program. Uh, so just, in, uh, just to be safe, do, uh, can I also apply for the open one as well? Like in case I don't yeah. get it. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you if you apply for the targeted program, what we'll do is we'll have a look at the CV, mm -hmm. and uh, if if you've got relevant work experience, then we'll give you an interview. Uh, but either way, if you make it to the interview process, um, and even through the interview process, then we decide that um, you might not be qualified or, or the role might not suit. Um, we'll automatically give you an offer. Um, to join the open program. So if you apply uh, for, for targeted, um, then you'll default back to open if, if, um, if you don't, if you're not successful with the targeted application. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, any more questions from anyone? Hi, Steve. Uh... Do we have a tentative date for um, the response on the applications that we have submitted? Um, so I'm working with Samuel to get all of those done by the end of this week. Uh, we've got about 10 days left um, to get it all sorted. Um, 
we do have like the applications close on the 25th, but we do have a little bit of time after that to organize everything. Um, so I, I, I'm expecting that all of the emails uh, will start to go out from early next week. We've got, um, we did the data science program information session last week and we've got the IT help desk one this afternoon. So once all that's done, we'll coordinate the mail out and send it all to everyone in one go. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thanks a lot. Okay, any more questions? Okay, so there's, uh, feel free to hang on if you've got a question that you'd like to ask, but if there's no more questions, um, thanks everyone for attending. Uh, this meeting has been recorded. So for those who couldn't attend, um, hopefully they're watching it back uh, at a later time. Um, if you've got any questions or you want to submit your CV, just send through to jobs at itic.com.au uh, and then uh, we can go from there. So we hope to see you soon. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for your time. Yeah, no, no problem. My pleasure. I'll hang on for a few minutes just if there's any questions, but yeah, everyone have a great day. Thanks, Stephen. Have a good one. Thank you. Uh, hi, Stephen. I have a question. Hi, Mohit. Yep. Uh, actually, my question is regarding the uh, pre-placement training. So, so like considering both the both the uh, streams, the open and targeted one. So we have the certification training uh, in both of them. Yeah, certification in both of them. If you're in the open uh, uh, program, then the enrollment fee is fifteen hundred dollars uh, for the five-week course. Um, okay. If you're in a targeted program, then you get a scholarship for that because basically your uh, contract work uh, pays for the training or the company pays for the training on your behalf. Okay, okay. So, uh, like, uh, basically, what's the success criteria? Like, uh, right now, I don't have any, uh, uh, you know, experience because I'm a fresh graduate. So, I recently completed my master's from UTS in IT. Oh. Yep. So, so like, uh, um, but if you've got an IT, if you've got an IT background, um, you know, you do need to know about, um, you know, it's, it's helpful if you've, if you've done any work on, um, you know, Windows operating system, either from a desktop or a server perspective, um, if you've done networking and you understand what Nmap is and what uh, Wireshark is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Use those um, so if you're starting completely green without any IT knowledge, then I'd say it might not be, um, you might struggle. But in saying that, the good thing about cybersecurity is that it's a role that um, there's actually not really any prerequisites apart from some basic IT uh, knowledge. So all of the information around, uh, you know, threat modeling and threat analysis and, um, you know, playbooks and all of those sort of things. They're all concepts if you haven't already come across that you'll be able to pick up quite quickly if you've got an IT knowledge. So um, I think the key thing is that you sort of put, put the hours in. So attend all the lectures, uh, read all the study notes, do all the exercises, um, and then yeah. go through and do the hands-on on the on the, um, on the um, Project Aries platform on the cyber range. Um, okay. And then you know if if you're doing all those things, then uh, I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to pass the exam. Um, and it's an online exam as well, so uh, you do have some parts of it that are open book. Um, so you just need to know. Um, all of the background information and where to find things. Um, and then um, I'm, 
you know, if, if you've if you've done your bachelor's degree in IT, I'm pretty confident that you'll be able to pass the uh, certification exam for cyber if you put the work in. Uh, I have done my bachelor in forensics and I have done my uh, IT, uh, my master's in IT cybersecurity from UTS. Um, I think that should be all right. You, you won't have any problem at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You'll be fine, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, this yeah. exam was uh, related to certification exam, right? Uh, you, you, your discussion was regarding the certification exams. Yeah. So if you've yeah, yeah, done okay. once, so once you've done once you've done the online curriculum and the cyber range training, uh, once okay. you feel that you're ready, then we pay the exam fee, and you okay. you sit okay. the nice certification exam. Yeah. Um, so okay. You can, great. You can still do the program and not do the exam if you don't feel you're ready for it, or you can come back and do it later. But um, ideally, you'll sort of go through the 13 weeks and be at the end of it, be ready to sit the exam. Okay. Okay. Got it. Uh, actually, in UTS also, like I have been through uh, two certification exam uh, from from Cisco, like uh, in the form of subjects. Like I studied lens and routing and CCN and security. So I think. Uh, if I uh, get it, done, I will. Yeah, my, my preference will be the CCN security one. Yeah, yeah. If you've done the basic Cisco uh, LAN, you know, the yeah, yeah. LAN, um, you know, switches and routers. Yeah, the and, routing one. Yeah, done, the LAN and routing. You've done, you know, you've done firewalls and, and yeah. you've done some, yeah. something on the security side. Then you, yeah, yeah. you definitely won't have any trouble doing this. Um, okay. With, okay with, great. With that program. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks, Stephen. All right, no problem. All right, well, if there's no more questions, I shall drop off and have a great day.